Business is Stephen. Greece. It's right at the top again. Are we heading for another debt deadline, Stephen? Yes, is the short answer. I thought things, that could be the answer. Good. Uh, things are definitely heating up ahead of this <laughs> week's uh, European summit in Latvia. The Greek government is hoping to reach a technical agreement on economic reforms as early as today in time for leaders to discuss it later in the week. Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras has ruled out further wage and pension cuts, but is reported to have offered more privatisations instead. Finance Minister Yanis Varoufakis says he's expecting a deal within a week. I think we are very close. Of course, until the deal is done, no one ever knows when the deal will be done. Another currency is not on our radar. It's not in our thoughts. It's not even in our imagination. Now, we've seen the euro fall in early trading against the dollar based on those jitters over Greece. But let's take a look at what's happening on the stock market. It's a more optimistic picture at the start of trading uh, here in Europe. Most of the European markets opening up. London's FTSE 100, in fact, has since turned into positive territory. But that's the opening figure for you. Here in France, we're watching shares in the state-owned electricity company EDF. Uh, its boss saying this morning they'd pay a market price for nuclear reactors at the struggling nuclear firm. Arriva EDF shares opening down around 1% while, EDF, uh, while Arivas are slightly up over in Asia very briefly as well. Things looking up there too today, particularly cheery on the Shanghai Composite uh, shares there up almost 3%. Now, next to a legal dispute involving the uh, Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba. Yeah, Alibaba is being sued by the French luxury group Kering, which owns brands including Gucci and Yves Saint Laurent. The action is over the sale of counterfeit goods on the Chinese company's websites. Now, Alibaba says it would have preferred to work with Kering on this issue. Let's listen to what the company's boss, Jack Ma, had to say about this earlier. I think it is regrettable that the company sued us. It would have been preferable if they had tried to find a solution through cooperation with us to deal with the problem together. There will be no future for e-commerce if we cannot protect copyright. Now then, here in France, more companies are being taken over by workers and they're uh, managing to make a success of failing ventures, aren't they? Yeah, the number of cooperatives here in France has increased by more than 40% uh, over a decade. The vast majority are new businesses, but a third of them are survival stories, whether taking over the company during a time of difficulty or after the founder has ceded control. One such story is the ice cream maker La Belle Ode. William Hildebrandt has more. Though it looks rich now... It wasn't always the case. Four years ago, production at this French ice cream plant came to a halt. But 19 workers took a gamble, and last year they created the cooperative La Belle Ode. Now we know that it's our work, our company. We are working for ourselves, not for somebody else. The transformation was not painless. In 2011, their former company Pilpo was bought by British giant r, &R Ice Cream, who decided to close a plant, and nearly all of the 124 staff lost their jobs. But some decided to pool their resources, a group of 19, each using a portion of their redundancy payments of 20,000 euros, set up the new co-op in the old site. People had to take on new roles. Some workers left the factory floor for the office, taking on bookkeeping. Production also had to be downscaled. Today, La Belle Ode only uses one-fifth of the plant. The former landlords left with all the equipment, so everything was dismantled. Where they tore down a business, we created one. Their solution was unemployment, while ours was new jobs. Co-ops are on the rise in France from 1,500 in 2003 to more than 2,200 a decade later, a 46 percent increase. And they're faring well, too. While only half of French companies survive after five years, the figure is higher for co-ops. As for La Belle Ode, last year sales were 750,000 euros, beating expectations. Making us all hungry, can't think why. Now we're going to stay with um, Apple for our final business story. The value that one tweet can have. Just one tweet, this. Yes, further proving that there are some people that are really worth following on Twitter. And mm. one of them is the activist investor Carl Icahn. He tweeted uh, on Monday about Apple. And this one tweet added $8 billion wow. to the value of Apple. Now, it's a link to a letter that he's written to Tim Cook, uh, where he asks him to uh, do a whole lot of things to try and boost the value of the company. He believes that Apple is grossly undervalued and could be worth 84% more per share than it is currently. So the current value uh, w would be significantly less than the $240 yeah. 
per share that uh, Carl Icahn thinks it's uh, worth. He says the company's value will only increase because of new products like the Apple Watch. Uh, he is a man to watch in these things. He tends to have very feisty interactions with the companies he invests in. Uh, his This one tweet also benefits his investment, which went up in value by $76 million. Oof. Can you destroy it yourself, Stephen? Just, just tweet just the just reverse tweet yourself. Yes. And Our then business can... guru says, and then he'll lose millions, won't he? Well, <laughs> what are you suggesting? <laughs> <laughs> just that everybody follows you and takes every bit of notice of what you say, That would be a terrible idea, yeah. Stephen Carroll on Twitter, of course.